What is KW and the auto ionization of liquid water? Well, KW is just the equilibrium constant for this auto ionization equilibrium reaction. It is also called the ion product constant or ion product reaction with water or the auto ionization of water constant. So all of these are really synonymous used together for this auto ionization reaction of water molecules reacting with each other. Before we can go over this reaction though, we're going to need to have the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid, base, and amphoteric substances. So an acidic substance or an acid is something that's gonna donate a proton or a hydrogen ion. A base is gonna be a proton acceptor or a hydrogen ion acceptor. And then an amphoteric substance can be an acid or a base. And water is probably the most common amphoteric substance that you might have to learn about. Before we write the reaction, I do want to go over one last thing, which is a hydrogen ion is called a proton because there's one proton. And if it's a hydrogen one plus ion, it has lost the one electron that it contained and it never had a neutron. So that's why a hydrogen ion is just called a proton. All right, so let's look at the reaction. I already kind of got it started here. So what you want to do is draw the dot structure for two water molecules kind of near each other with two single bonds and then two lone pairs. And I'm going to darken this bond right here, this single bond, and I'm going to kind of darken this hydrogen right here. So this bond and this hydrogen. Because I'm going to show that this water molecule is going to act as an acid, and then the other water molecule is going to act as a base. So following the definitions above, this hydrogen ion, I'll circle it kind of in red, is going to be donated to this sort of this lone pair, or you can think of it as the lone pair is going to be attracted to that hydrogen ion, and it's going to be removed from this water molecule. This single bond here, though, is going to remain on this um, OH, and then this hydrogen ion is going to go and bond to this lone pair. So on the product side, here are your two products. You have a product called the hydronium ion, so I'll write that in a second. This is what it looks like. It's a trigonal pyramidal structure. And remember, again, this, this bond right here was that lone pair that existed right there. Okay, that kind of darkened. And so what happens is this takes on a positive charge, and it has the name hydronium ion. And then the other substance that's left is the oxygen bonded to the hydrogen, that bond that has been sort of broken, and then the two lone pairs that were already there. And then this takes on a negative one charge and it's called the hydroxide ion, probably an ion you have already heard about. Before we go even any farther into the math, I wanna label these as a conjugate acid-base pair. So that's really important when you deal with Bronsted-Lowry definitions, is what this reaction was to, you know, the reverse reaction were to be happening, they also need to have an acid and base that can return back to the reactants, which are also acids and bases. So I'm just going to color code them. The hydroxide ion is called the conjugate base of the water molecule that was the acid on the other side. And you kind of know that hydroxide ion is a base, which is why I wanted to start with that one first. And then you maybe don't know that a hydronium ion is a acid. It's a conjugate acid of the water molecule that was the base on the other side. So these are called conjugate acid base partners. If you ever have to write them, you might want to say like, you know, this water molecule has a conjugate partner, which is the hydronium. And then the other one is the conjugate partner, the acid, the water that's acting as an acid. Its conjugate partner is the hydroxide. So you could have to write those. All right, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw this with what's called the space filling molecule. I like this one better because it's the one that kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. And if you ever have to draw particulate views, you'll be drawing this a lot. So here are my two water molecules. So again, this is my hydrogen ion that's going to act as the acid, okay? Um, and then on the other side, that hydrogen ion, I'll even darken it, so it turns into, again, this trigonal pyramidal structure. There's that hydrogen that was donated, making this a positive ion, and then the hydroxide is a negative ion. And then you would put AQ for these. Now, we normally don't draw the space filling molecules or even the dot structures. More commonly, what you'll see is that you'll just use the chemical formulas for these, H2O and H2O, and then you have your equilibrium double arrow showing that the reaction is reversible, and then you get your hydronium ion uh, in you know, aqueous solution and your hydroxide ion in aqueous solution. 
Now the key here is that any temperature, this is always true, your hydronium ion, which is your acid, is always going to equal the hydroxide ion. And that's what makes something be neutral. And this is going to be super important when we move on to acids and bases, which is my next video. So when these two are equal, it doesn't matter what temperature it's at, this auto ionization reaction is going to be always giving one hydronium and one hydroxide. And that's what makes something be neutral. So if you were to add something to water and it doesn't change this fact, then water stays neutral. If you were to add something to water and all of a sudden, you know, this became greater or even less than, well, now we've made something become acidic or basic. So this is a little fact that I'll deal with in the next video, but I think it's good to just say it right now before I get into the math and why the pH of water is seven at 25 degrees. But let's just do this now and say, well, what if our hydronium ion is greater than our hydroxide? That's going to be labeled as acidic. So some, something that you added to water made it acidic. But if your hydronium ion was less than your hydroxide ion, then now you've made something, you know, turn water into being basic. Okay, so let's go into the math of why we say the pH of water is 7 at room temperature, which is 25 degrees, and why we call that, again, neutral. So in the next part, I'm going to go over the math that's involved in this and the equations that you're going to use not only for this, but for other things. So at... 25 degrees, so you might see somebody put a 25 degrees next to the Kw. The Kw of water at 25 degrees is 1 to the negative, or 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And what that means is, is we're going to write the reaction. Let me see if I have one close enough here. There we go. We have our products, which are our hydronium ions, just like a regular old equilibrium reaction. We write the, what's called the law of mass action. Let me fix this, actually. We usually put the plus on the inside with this, okay? So the concentration of that, and you could say raised to the 1, but normally we wouldn't do that. And then the hydroxide concentration, again, raised to the 1. But again, most of the time we don't put the 1s. I'm just going to clean this up because it looks a little bit bad. Perfect. There we go. And then you would divide it by the reactants. But since our reactants are, um, our water is a liquid, we would just say 1. So usually if you clean this all up, they'll say that the Kw is the hydronium ion concentration multiplied by the hydroxide concentration. And then if you're at 25, which will be a whole separate video is what happens when we're not, but let's just say we are, it's to the negative 14th. Now, this is also important. Remember that these two are equal. So I'm going to call both of these x. So I'm going to solve for this and get to why the pH is 7. Like this is all about now why is this 7 at neutral uh, a neutral, you know, neutral state at 25 degrees. So I'm just going to call these both x. So then 1 times 10 to the mi minus 14 is, you know, the concentration of hydronium multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide. They're both x, so it's x squared, because if they're both the same. So if I take the square root of these, I would get that 1 times 10 to the minus 14th equals x. Or sorry, not times 10 to the minus 14th, sorry, sorry, to the negative 7. So hopefully you caught that my mistake. All right, so then this is the concentration of either ion. So I'm going to write that below. So my hydronium ion is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7th. And I'm just going to say that that equals also the hydroxide concentration. So how do they get again that the pH is 7? So let's keep going. Make sure you catch my little mistake right there. Sorry about that, but that's why it's a video. You can always pause and go back. So these are the two equations you're going to use a lot in an acid-base chapter. The pH is calculated by taking the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. If you have not, you know, learned that the hydrogen ion and the hydronium ion are used as, you know, either one, then add that in right now. pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, so let's just go back here. Remember that the concentration, I'm just going to sneak a little bit higher here. Remember they were both to the negative 7. So 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and you can put the molarity in there if you'd like. If you take the negative log of this, you get 7. And all the negative log does is get rid of the, uh, the tens places, okay? And then the negative gets rid of that negative sign. If you do the same thing for the pOH, the negative log of that same exact value is going to equal 7. So don't be shocked if you see one more equation. So I'm going to kind of box these out in green. So don't be surprised if you're going to use this equation a lot in this chapter to decide if something is, you know, more acidic or basic. And then here is another equation that you're going to use quite often is, again, this is only true at room temperature. It's just 25. 
is that if you add the pH and the pOH, you get 14. But I'm going to put a little disclaimer at 25 degrees. So those are some key facts, and that's what makes something uh, be neutral. Now, if you add something into water, okay, you could tip the, I call the pendulum one way or the other. So for example, let's just say since these are equal, you know, we have a little, little, you know, old fashioned like pendulum balance here. And we say that the hydronium ion sits on this side and the hydroxide ion sits on this side. Well, when something is neutral, you have an equal amount of both of these. But when something is acidic, what happens is this pendulum tips to being more acidic. So I'm just going to kind of draw like this, okay? So then this concentration is higher than this concentration of hydroxide. And that's what makes something become acidic when you add it to water. And then the opposite of this, and if you wanted to write again, this is where they're equal, whereas this is when this one's greater. So then the opposite of this would be, well, what happens again if this tips and instead of being flat, it's leaning more towards the side of being hydroxide. And this again is when you add something to water. And that's when the hydronium ion is less than the hydroxide, then something becomes basic. So that's how when you add things to water, you know, it starts out as neutral. But then depending on how the substance that you add kind of tips this little, we'll call, you know, you know, pretend little balance or little teeter-totter lever, you can turn something from becoming acidic or basic or neutral. So this is kind of the best definitions I have for acid base, ba acidic, basic, and neutral, is that it really just depends on these three different uh, choices and the difference in concentration, okay? Are they equal? or is the hydronium ion greater than the hydroxide, or is it less than the hydroxide, and then that's what ends up changing the pH of water. All right, so I hope in this video you kind of know what makes you know, water neutral. At 25 degrees, you've got this pH plus pOH equals 14, kind of how we got to that point, and it all started from the fact that you know, they're equal concentrations, um, and they equal one to the negative 14th at 25 degrees. So then both concentrations have this, you know, 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molarity. And then it all started from the fact that water can ionize with itself. It does that in equal amounts, um, and it can act again as an amphoteric substance. So hopefully in this video you understand what KW is. You also understand what autoionization is. And when you start to add things to water that you can change sort of the amount of hydronium ions or hydroxide ions tipping to becoming more acidic or basic. All right, good luck chemists, and hopefully you'll watch some other videos that I have. Subscribe and like, good luck.